Okay, so he didn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> any anyway, ways go 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 figure. Uh, uh, Manny, the guy on the West Coast being a slacker. Her. <laughs> You got some, uh, either a new angle on your camera or a new poster hanging up back there? Oh. Both? Both? Okay. Both. Cool. Both. New angle, got a new webcam, got a new office set up, uh, that changes the angle and different camera yeah. and lighting and stuff. So yeah, all, all new me. You nice. Know, most of you aren't going to be able to see it at all because no. this is a podcast. Yeah. A video podcast. And and speaking of it being a podcast, it is good morning, everybody, and welcome to LR Mornings uh, today with Kyle and returning for the first time in a while, Jammer. Jammer, what's up, man? Not much. Dealing with the uh, the sub zero weather we got here, <laughs> um, our our shower drain Ooh. froze yesterday, uh, mm. and we were able to clear it out. And then it froze last night again. So we're trying to do that too. <laughs> so that's one of the things I'm dealing with today. Um, luckily, it's not going to be after, after it gets above zero. Let's see. It'll be above zero within the next hour and a half. And it's not coming back to below zero until after, you know, well, it's not in the foreseeable future. So that's, that's, okay. that's a good sign. Uh, right now it's negative six. Yeah, we we've had n nothing but miserable wet rain. There's like a a wall you can wa watch because I live on the mid Atlantic coast, so you know how coastal weather can can uh, be. Like you can have actually freaking, don't. I've never uh, been on the east coast. I've only been on the west coast. West coast is so different from east coast. Okay, well y there's like a a literal line about twenty. 30 miles inland where you can watch the snow and ice from that storm turning into rain as it's hitting the warmer Atlantic uh, air. And mm -hmm. so, so we're watching people literally like de uh, not even, you know, a very long dr drive away, get ice and rain and all that. And, and we get nothing, but uh, I don't want to talk about the weather. I, I want to talk about, uh, I can't believe I want to say this. Yes. Uh, want to yes. talk about the Zack Snyder's Justice League trailer? What What'd you oh, think yeah. of it? Uh, I thought it was really good. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I am very much. I thought Man of Steel was okay. Mm -hmm. I love Batman v Superman. For some ungodly ultimate reason, edition, ultimate edition. Because I think it's really great. Um, and I, I really like this trailer because it does seem to be taking things full circle. And it really is, it really shows that I feel like the Zack Snyder movies, Zack Snyder trilogy, as it were, is kind of its own thing, even if it's, you know, kind of set up a universe. Like if you think about it now, especially with the way the universe is going, it's basically, you know, Wonder Woman's comment about giving up on humanity, no hmm. longer really canon based on the interpretation from Patty Jenkins. Um, and, you know, what's his name? Ben Affleck, no longer Batman. Like, all these things that are no longer happening, even while other things like Aquaman, so much are, ha are happening. This is, it's still kind of this own little pocket universe. It's become its own little thing. Mm -hmm. And it almost makes it that much better that you have the Man of Steel movie, you have Batman v Superman, and it all culminates in the Justice League movie. And um, especially this trailer where it had the quote from Pa Kent from Man of Steel, where um, there has to be a reason why you were sent here. And even if it takes your whole life, you owe it to yourself to find out what that reason is, something along those lines. It really just kind of brings it home to this journey that Superman has gone on. And I know a lot of people have had a lot of complaints from Man of Steel on, you know, this Superman is too emo, depressing, blah, 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 blah. You know, this isn't my Superman. He's not the one I grew up with. He doesn't. Like uh, this idea that he needs to be come out of the womb uh, a uh, completely perfect and positively motivated human being when I never felt like it made sense personally from Superman, like as, as a character for him to be an all really strong person in the Midwest. He's going to be a dick most likely. <laughs> and while he doesn't need to be a dick, he's not a dick in the Zack Snyder movie. He is right, conflicted. Right. Um, 
And this idea that you have this dad who was just like, hey, I, he's not perfect either. You know, obviously he had some flawed ideas about humanity. And it's, it's this journey about this alien finding his place in the world and then finally understanding it's like, oh, this is what I was here for. I was here to prevent humanity from dying and to protect them. And it's like, we're getting to that journey. I think he kind of got there a bit of that Batman v Superman, but I think it's going to be really reinforced at the end of this Justice League movie. And that's sort of the big, I guess, regret I had from the, the Justice League movie from 2017 was that as much as I thought it was a fun Saturday morning cartoon, I didn't think it was great, but I thought it was fun. I still think mm-hmm. it's better than Age of Ultron. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but the point is that I, it didn't really fulfill the arc with Superman. He was just instantly good for no definable reason. Um, but yeah, anyways, back to the trailer. This really does show that journey kind of coming to complete the way they brought in Kevin Costner's voiceover for that moment was just chill inducing for me because it's like, all right, this is the end of the journey. This is the moment that Superman realizes this is what he's put on this earth for. And this will be literally the start of Superman. Like this is the start of the Superman that everyone has been wanting to see since mm-hmm. 2000, what, 12 or 13, whenever the Man of Steel came out. So I think that's great. I also, uh, you know, the visual effects look way better than Justice League, than the original Justice League, Sp- specifically Steppenwolf. He looks more like a creature. He looks more spiky. He looks more armored. He lumbers more. Um, it looks just like more complete, uh, a more visually complete look. Uh, as we saw from the end of Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. And uh, what else is there? I, I think it also really drives home this idea that we're dealing with the equivalent of Greek gods. Like there's a real, and you could probably say there's too much. I don't think so. Like this, this heaviness and drama that it has, it just feels, <laughs> it feels like an epic poem almost in the mm. way it's done. Uh, so yeah, I, there's a lot to like here. But what do you think? I d- definitely th- think it's better than than uh what what we uh saw in theaters uh or at least it looks looks it um okay. I I did notice uh that in in the trailer some of the CGI still s- stands out a bit much mm-hmm. uh at times um again in in the uh amazonian scenes is where i i don't know what it is about thera skia but yeah th- yeah sorry mispronouncing it uh uh warner brothers doesn't seem to be able to do gr- great cgi for that place <laughs> all every t- time i see it on screen i'm like just the things you guys are doing aren't mixing well with this. I don't. I don't know know what it is, but uh, other than that, um, I, I, mean, I, think I it don't looks fine to me. I don't think it looks any. I mean, I think it looks pretty standard. Uh, Hollywood stuff. There's that you're talking about that one shot where that giant building is falling off the cliff. That was one one of them, and uh, Steppenwolf to me stands out starkly, and it and it could be just because of the the way the the armor is, but the. Mm reflections and stuff i don't know it just it didn't really seem he he st- stood out to me like i like i said and so uh um other than that uh you can see where a lot of the theatrical stuff has been re recolored and uh uh or recolored re- uh <laughs> what's that or decolored uh, or de 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 colored yeah uh well no no cuz the, there was a lot of orange there and that now there's like some darker like purples and stuff well, in the that's, sky. That's and... the thing is that uh yeah, what's his name? Whedon, he he made this this red tint for like that third act fight mm-hmm. scene that wasn't there before. Mm. Yeah. Uh the the m- most interesting thing for for all of this, I think, is um uh go- going to to see um how how much because we, we we were told he only filmed five additional minutes and then everything else is is vfx a, adr and then cleaning up the the cans of film that that he had is is what we were told produced this movie but it's very very obvious how different not only uh what he he had originally 
but what the this is compared to that c- compared to the theatrical version mm-hmm. and uh um i mean i've got a a hbo max uh christine never saw the theatrical cut because you know she thought it looked that bad i i saw saw it i told her she has to watch it before we we watch the snyder version and uh I am I'm I'm ec- excited to see what people have to s- say about it but I'm also nervous about it at the s- same time because I I think no Are matter what happens g- good or or bad we're going to have to deal with a f- few weeks of of oh my god this is the greatest thing s- since sliced bread <laughs> and uh uh or I'm just the opposite of people he, saying, "Oh, this is typical Zack Snyder." You think so? Pointless. Absolutely. I, I, Absolutely. I don't know. So, I used to think so because of how many people complain complained about, like you said, Man, Man of Steel, for example, which uh, and and BVS, which you know he remastered BVS. There's a third version of it going to be be coming out. Really? <laughs> yes. No Wait, joke. Wait, really? Hold on. There's a third version of Batman yes. v Superman coming he out. He just What's finished. Uh, I he's he called it a re- remaster. Uh, BBS remaster. Uh, yeah, he, it's uh released an image on the direct ba- back on December 23rd from the remastered ver- version of Dawn of of Justice. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Uh, it looks like it's, um, there's si- signs as whether the IMAX screen ratio will be used for the, the entirety of the new cut or just portions of it, but it certainly shows more, more of the scenery in this shot than, than either of the original nightmare scenes previously released. D uh, one of the biggest things that, that I've always ha- had an issue with, with when it came to the Snyder cut was, you know, me, Snyder me, cut of Justice League. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and people wanting it was those people that were uh, always yelling about Snyder ruining th- things, and then all of a sudden it was like, uh, oh, we 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 want Snyder back. And I've always said, you know, to guys like you that are uh, that have always been from the beginning, either yes, I I like it or I I don't hate it. Cool. It's those those people that were like, I hate Snyder. Snyder sucks. Oh God, give give me Snyder. Like. I want this to be be over with because I want that. But I guess to go away. I guess the question is it's hard. <laughs> it's impossible to track whether or not those same people yeah, who are complaining about it is. Zack Snyder are the ones who are cheering for this because the ones who are cheering for this might also just be really loud and obnoxious. They could, they they yeah. could. You so you, do, do, what do you think will be the eh, end result? Snyder has said Warner Brothers uh, has no interests in. Con- continuing like you said this is kind of like a pocket universe now mm-hmm. essentially he and he's mentioned that uh they could look at you know a graphic novel a comic or something to finish uh his his sto- story i don't know if i really buy buy that because they're letting they're letting him you know remaster bbs they let him do do this I could see if this does well enough. I could see them letting him do do Justice League too. Could you? That'd be cool. I could. I mean, it, it as of right now, no. But if this like somehow is like the greatest thing ever, if it's somehow really really great and does really good numbers for HBO Max, and yeah, I, I could definitely see them letting him do his second justice league movie but it all depends on the money you know it all depends on if it's financially viable or if this yeah. is just like you know a really nice thing for them to do taking things that they already have and then repurposing it for their streaming service like there's a big difference between you know throwing down 70 million dollars mm-hmm. versus three 250 million dollars or whatever 200 million dollars like that there's a big difference there yeah um so yeah, I think it all just depends on that. Like, if it does well enough to really justify that, maybe. But it's hard to say. It's impossible to say. But never I th- say never. I will. Yeah, say. I I think the the one thing that that would definitely go go against it being um uh uh potentially um wait 
What was I doing? You were talking about something that might potentially allow maybe or give allow Zack Snyder to continue oh. with Justice League Two. Um, uh, the uh, I haven't seen a lot of it, but um, mer merchandise and mer merchandise sales, and then again, uh, home 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 video sales might play a fact factor into it. Um, and of course, like you said, uh, uh, people's online reactions does it see a jump in subscriber hers do subscribers that were coming up on lo losing the service re up like a lot of that's gonna i think warner brothers is looking at this and not only for snyder's J justice league but i'm almost at the point and i hated suicide squad both both version and the oh, yeah. theatrical I think and the, the air cut is way more likely than the justice league two at this point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you guys let Snyder come in and make, uh, Snyder's justice league, uh, remaster B BVS. And I guarantee T it almost that he's going to get to do and do a recut of man of steel. I'd almost put, I'd almost put money on it. But, I don't know uh, about that. I feel like that was purely Snyder's vision. You think you think he's happy like with it complete? Maybe. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I I think if we do, it'll be a situation where he just wants to do it because he's learned things since then, mm -hmm. not because the studio interfered in any way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, why not let Air get get hit? He says it's like Snyder's. He says it was more more finished than Snyder's oh. was. So. I, I I don't I don't I, don't I mean know. I think it once again depends on Justice League how yeah. this does if this does really well let's say hey let's go ahead and throw down an extra I don't know thirty million dollars for uh, Suicide Squad get the same thing they're gonna digitally remove the damage from the head <laughs> <laughs> of Joker oh, damage tattoo man what you what you think of uh uh Leto and the complete complete meta uh Joker uh society meme making it into a justice league movie i didn't get it mm. i i i don't think i'm aware i think i've probably heard or seen we live in a society i don't think i ever understood the context of what why it's a thing right but just the fact that, that a me? very contemporary very I'm, like contemporary. i just well i mean the thing is i i'm not really i'm not really as familiar like i haven't yeah. seen it around enough for it right. to really make an impact so i really don't okay. know what's what's the context of the meme it, it was it was uh if I, if I'm not mistaken, it came came around a few years ago, um, uh, where a lot of uh, uh, ni nice guys, I think they're they're called, uh, and g gamers were c complaining about uh, um, uh, not being able to get mates because you know mates would get prefer mates. this that that or the other, and and it be became this meme using the Joker. Uh, a few years ago, and it always would start off with we we live in a society, and it's connected to, to a um uh uh what's that god awful sh Seinfeld Seinfeld uh joke from uh the short uh heavy heavier set guy I can't I hate Seinfeld so so I don't remember the George character. Costanza there you go oh um that's what it was based off of I just found it kind of like the context, I think some people online are trying to re read too much into it because, like I said, it's it's an it's from a few years it's a few years old of a meme, but it's still very contemporary and and very very n new. And that I just thought stop, it was that didn't crazy. Stop Marvel from going, what are those? And yeah, that, right. Uh, but Panther that's movie. that's Mar Marvel, and that kind of kind of fit it. And I don't know, it just it was kind of weird to 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 see it in there so so um, i mean it's a very joker thing to say yeah so it's like it's one of those things where it's like ah oh, is the joker not allowed to say that anymore because it's, it's very 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 uh uh meta and like I said, i'm not against it at all i'm just uh saying it was, I, I, it was yeah. off it was i know weird. it is i didn't notice it like, yeah literally i didn't notice it until i saw people talking about <laughs> it like, oh the meme and i was like oh okay like we live in society and apparently from what i see so it was from seinfeld Mm -hmm. And then it became paired with the Joker. Did the Joker yep. even say that? In I don't think. Comics? I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. I think people t just. It took a life of its own. Own and 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 um. 
once once the trolls and internet pe- people got a hold of it, you know, it just spins off from from there, and it's cra- crazy. Uh, um, how how many versions of that meme exist, <laughs> and all, all the uh, really crazy like uh, social commentary people would would try to p- put in them. Uh, even as jokes, even trying to be, uh, uh, trying to be, uh, funny with it. What did you think of the Joker? Uh, he's fine, fine. He's, I mean, it's, it's all alternate stuff and, uh, um, I, I always did feel bad that, that a lot of Leto's stuff got left on the, on the floor and he was, he and others were upset by that. So Snyder giving him a shot to, you know, show a little something else is cool. Whole, I guess. Does that I make mean, sense? I, from what I understand, this is the Joker was not, it was added after it wasn't, mm-hmm. uh, it was one of the things that was added. It wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't part of the original story. Excuse me, story. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's nice that Snyder's like, Oh, Hey, I saw you got a, raw deal airs getting a raw deal right now not being able to you know r- release his version so why don't you come and do a scene with me and we'll put some of that mm. energy you had that ended up on the floor floor we'll put that into to my movie i like yeah. to think that's the way it happened <laughs> yeah Maybe. so um but yeah uh uh any any last words on on the Justice League uh Zack Zack Snyder's Justice League tra- trailer? I'm very excited for it. I think it looks good. We'll see if that ends up being the case, but either way like I'm always I'm super excited just to see a a filmmaker get a chance to complete a vision that I never thought was possible. I didn't think we were ever going to see this. No, so no, none of us I am none super of us did. Stoked. Um, just, you know, we, we always tend to be like, oh, it would have been better if this, and now we can find out for sure. Oh, would it have been better? We'll see. Yeah. I hope so. Very, very true. I, I, you, you know me, i I'm always one to say, I want to be entertained and I, I want to be wrong when I think a movie will suck. And there's been, been a few times that I've been pleasantly su- surprised. Transformers was, was one, believe it or not, the original, I went the into that one wanting to hate it. Uh, for the aesthetics alone, and came out and was like, "That was good popcorn action." I was happy. He and then it was all downhill from there. But anyways, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna go talk to M- Mike Tully uh, of the Tully Show. We're gonna talk a little bit bit about um, changing in uh, uh, entertainment consumption. Uh, Tully uh, used to work on on C- Sirius XM. Um, and on the J- Jason Ellis show on, and, uh, now the Jason Ellis show is av- available on, uh, YouTube. Um, but T- Mike Tully actually has his own, uh, podcast as well. The T- Tully show and Tully time. We're going to get into some of that and, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys on the other s- side of it. Ladies and gen- gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, Mike Tully, uh, man, that's kind of been in this, uh, business for quite some time, uh, been uh, p- part of a uh, satellite radio, uh, including um, the very famous uh, J- Jason Ellis show, which is now available on YouTube, which we'll t- talk about. Um, you've done some stand-up com- uh, comedy. Uh, uh, and of co- course, you actually started po- podcasting back in 16, 17, so somewhere right around there. It's funny you mention that because I'm I had to fill out some form for my podcast the other day and I just wrote in, yeah, this podcast is two years old. And I'm like, I should probably verify that fact. I actually have no idea how old it is. And I myself was surprised to find out that I believe I've been podcasting for four. It, I might be going on five. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a veteran. Um, it, it's uh, interesting. I my my wife and I d- discovered um, uh you and and Jason and 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 Kevin and the guys on um when we bought bought a new new car when we got back from uh, Germany and um just kept it because great to l- listen to that while while traveling and whatnot but um funniest thing about this 
is uh, my original co co host. Uh, he and you sound so similar. All right. Uh, like, like you guys were brothers lost at some point, but um, he's uh um definitely um Mexican and uh uh Native American. So uh, that's really funny because I was gonna say, isn't it weird when people sound exactly the same but they don't look anything yeah, yeah. like? It's I think it's it's an, an underratedly disorienting thing for the mind. Cause mm -hmm. you just associate, it's like if, if like a, a hamburger smelled like a hot dog, it would just, it would fuck you up. You yes, know? <laughs> indeed it would. Indeed and that's kind of, that's kind of what, what, what you're talking about here. Kind of have to do, do the stereotypical since you're per, per first time guest. Uh, I have to ask that whole, what, what got you into the inter entertainment leading up to, of course, uh, the Ellis, Jason Ellis show. And of course the after effects of that and where you, where you guys are kind of at now. In a... So long story short, getting into it, I'd been in band, a band with a guy named Brian Cullen, who's a, still works at Sirius XM, was a DJ on the Faction Channel where the Jason Ellis show started and where I started as a DJ. And he recommended me for a job. And then our boss, Will Pendarvis, was moving to Los Angeles to start the Los Angeles office. So he offered me a full-time job and I didn't have any compelling reason to stay in New York. So I took that and literally directly got off the plane, drove to the studio and walked in and Jason and Will were doing a thing on air and I hopped on air with them. So I just got into the Ellis show at first and in helping in an informal way and then became more and more of my actual job description, particularly when the show went from nighttime to midday. Uh, during normal like office hours when mm -hmm. I was there, the show was happening six feet away from me. It was, I was going to be a part of it kind of no matter what. And uh, yeah. And then we moved a bunch of couple, two channels. I don't know how many time slots, three different studios and 15 years. And we had a really big, really awesome, incredible career capping 15th anniversary show lined up. And then they st shut the studio like two or three weeks before that. We were about to record a song for it. I mean, it was it was a lot going on. And uh, Jason was going to go through flames and then re-sign a contract. <laughs> and and, uh, and then we're not. And, uh, and you know, Sirius is, is, I think, was already kind of moving in a direction as a company. And then obviously the, the situation with coronavirus has uh, affected the company as well, I think it's fair to say. And so uh, we are we we are jobless, and I think are very very fortunate that we live in a media landscape in a world where we don't just go oh well that was fun I'm going to go do construction now I might still be doing construction three months from now but um, but we have a an opportunity to mm -hmm. um, and I really I sincerely value this a lot um, serious made the decision that they made and if i were in their shoes i might well have made the same decision but it feels very good to me that they don't get to decide that the show is over and they don't get to decide that we're done the people get to decide and so we continue on into pod world and win lose or draw i think it's in the long run going to mean a lot to me at least personally that nothing got taken away from us you know we yeah. we, we continue to do this thing and I, I believe it will be successful and um and if it's not nobody's fault but our own and that's that's as i say win lose or draw the way that i would prefer to live my life so i i feel i feel lucky you know in, 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 i honestly feel lucky because that show, we weren't going to be at serious for 50 years it was always going to end at some point you know yeah yeah there's there's a um so something we've been t talking a lot o over at lrm we we really focus on on movies but like i said we're, we're growing and and starting to incorporate uh other things i'm trying trying to uh, reach out to some bands music and uh things like that that um but um that the way way people c consume me media has really f forced a lot of um studios uh to approach the way they distribute m media d differently and you can see from from um you know the 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 silent film era to to the talkies to original broadcast television to to cable satellite streaming to now youtube and and things like that radio had its own 
similar path leading to kind of with uh the the online streaming but also the podcasting and you're getting t- to be a a part of that uh and and see it f- from the inside what is that like like um well you know for one thing i think people who are on the cutting edge or near the cutting edge of things tend to think we all kind of think that where we are is probably where everybody else is and you know, I would, uh, I, I think that, you know, streaming TV is obviously the present and the future, but uh, if you offered me a chance to own NBC, I would be pretty excited about that. I think people might be surprised how many people are still just turning on their television and mm-hmm. putting in channel four and watching what's what's on. And I think radio is the same thing. I think there's still quite a lot of people who, forget about satellite radio. There's still quite a lot of people that listen to FM radio. There's still people who listen to AM radio for God's sake. You know, it's, you could, there's people who are just now starting to make money in AM radio. That's an actual (laughs) thing that that can happen. Um, But I think the biggest thing that I can say that I like about this is I've never felt that I had any license to be self-indulgent. I've always assumed that what we were doing, and I probably had a very antiquated old timey idea of what we were doing this whole time. I think most people I work with would probably agree that I do, that we were broadcasting. And it was this idea that you're like at a county fair somewhere with a loudspeaker and you have no idea who's gonna walk past, but you need to keep the conversation happening in such a way that people just don't go, I don't even know, I'm lost. I don't know what's going on over there. Therefore, I'm not going to give it a try. There's always people leaving the room and entering the room. And not that the Jason Ellis show or me have ever been any good about, you know, refreshing, you know, if you're just tuning in, we're listening to blah, 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 you're talking to blah, blah, blah. Right. But I always had a sort of consciousness of that. And then when I started doing my own stuff, I had a real sense that, well, I'm on faction talk. Like I, I'm my next podcast that I'm going to put up is literally with um, a guy from a think tank in Jerusalem about Israeli Palestinian peace. And I don't know that I would have felt comfortable having that guy and putting it on faction talk because I felt some responsibility to be sort of like, like the channel. And this mm-hmm. is the Obi and Anthony and now the Jason Ellis and Jim and Sam thing. And now it's, it's not broadcasting, it's narrow casting. And I like that, I like that. when we do narrow the Jason cast. Ellis show free podcast. Well, now we're trying to talk to people who don't know us. And so we do an hour and a half like that. And when we do two Patreon Jason Ellis shows per week, well, now we're talking to super fans and we know that so we can hang out and luxuriate. And if one of us wants to get up and go pee, it's like, we can, (laughs) we're free, we're free to do that. And when I do my show, it's like, well, if I'm talking about music, I'm just going to assume that you guys give a half a shit about hair metal, or at least know the top 10 bands. Cause if, 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 if it turned you off to hear me mention them, you probably would have stopped listening a long time ago. Mm. So, and then particularly, I mean, the Patreon thing, you know, later on today, I'll just do a, a podcast where I just answer questions from people, like a straight Q and A thing. I never, ever, 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 ever would have had like the hubris to assume, well, everybody just wants to know everything that's on my mind. It was always like, well, let me talk to them about something. Cause they don't really care about me. I got to do a thing and, and make the thing interesting with a little me mixed in, Mm -hmm. but um, it feels nice to feel comfortable being a little self-indulgent with super fans. And then a little bit more like this with the other stuff. And as I say, narrow casting that you can, you can be specific. So that's my biggest observation so far. I like, I like, I like that. And um, also that nice whole, not having <laughs> that, that whole I- idea of, of um, kind of letting, letting go, go of, of focusing so, so much outward and to, to look inward. I can, I can definitely relate to who that um, given my, my, uh, previous career, but you're, you're passionate about, uh, every, everything that you just said, which kind of leads me right, right into my next question is, and I think you pretty much answered it, or at least half of it. 
with the the freedom g- given to um um uh, podcasters streamers um things with with patreon and all, all these things available who do you think is benefiting more uh creators or or consumers or do you see it as a a hundred percent mutual thing well i think there's just always there's a a give and a take and this isn't a bad example but you know marshall McLuhan said the the medium is the message that there's just like you know the classic example of that is like you don't see well there are a fair number of like tom clancy books but generally speaking novels aren't big action things because to say and then he ran and then he jumped and he almost couldn't hold on but then he did it's not really that interesting but you can talk about somebody's internal life really richly whereas like film has a trouble has trouble uh conveying internal life is really really good at action so if you're somebody who has been writing books this whole time and you're not very good at internal life, but it turns out you've got the secret talent for writing things where cars run into each other and explode. Well, then when movies take over, the guy or lady who was really good at the internal life, there'll be less work for her, but there'll be more work for the people who are, you know, so there's, I don't know that there's ever like a less or more. It's just that there are winners and losers as things, uh, as things change. I guess my guiding principle on this stuff is that, there used to be a lot of work for people who were lukewarm, likable to millions of people. And there still is, you can still host the Today Show, you know, Mm -hmm. but the more and more, uh, I'm very fond of whoever said it, um, the, the saying that, you know, it used to be in the future, you'll be famous for uh, 15 minutes. And now it's, you'll be famous for 15 people. And I think that that's like a huge, huge guiding principle for this sort of stuff is it used to be if you did a thing that a small number of people loved, but most people didn't like, you were kind of fucked. You know, like I was a really big fan of Chris Elliott, if that means anything Mm -hmm. to you, like he had a TV show, Get a Life when I was a kid and I loved it, but it just didn't have, I, I always loved shows that didn't have the viewership. And so they got canceled. Well, now somebody like that will have this small, relatively small, but incredibly passionate fan base. And so it's great for the fan base that 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 thing doesn't go away and they get served. And it's great for the creator. There's probably less jobs for people who are sort of blandly acceptable to millions and millions of people, you know? Um, and, and so it just, it changes. And as I say, there will, I don't, I don't know if it's better or worse. I think it's just, uh, there's winners and losers. I think that's the answer to the creator side of that for consumers. I think we're in an absolute golden age. That's only going to get more golden. Cause if you want middle of the road shit, they're still making lifetime movies, <laughs> but if you want something incredibly specific, you're being served in a way that you couldn't have dreamed of even 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy when we we finally decided that this year, year, um, when I was, uh, uh, medically retired, you know, you take a a pay cut. So you start looking at, at, uh, um, where you can cut things and you're like, God, what do I really watch on, on, on this TV? Can I get it streaming this, that, and the other? Um, looking at that, that whole idea of winners and, and, and losers is something I've brought up about movies. I'm not sure. I know you do follow movies. I know you're big on music. Uh, you got Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray on your show, uh, often talking music. Um, uh, I, I've pointed out that consumers have gotten almost kind of spoiled with getting a lot of things for free mm-hmm. and we saw hbo max uh offer their 21 uh slate of movies from warner brothers uh if you're subscribed you get the movie same as the uh the theater at no additional cost and um it brought on this this discussion of people want these 
say Avengers level m- movies, but they don't want to pay for it. And uh, when pe- when Disney charged people for Milan and and everyone rioted, and I'm like thirty bucks, D- dude, I spend way more than thirty dollars to see a movie. Um, mm-hmm. I I see the the evolution and the the possibility of creators not maybe making as much but like you you said it's going to be more fo- focused um more more dedicated may- maybe even m- more reliable yeah it's you know it's kind of hard to in in some ways i'm a creator and so is disney but in mm-hmm. other way more practical ways you know we're definitely apples and oranges in terms of the big hollywood stuff it's just right. going to find its what you know the the water line level i think you know what i'm trying to say it's just going to find itself like you can either make money making a 200 million dollar movie between worldwide and disney plus or whatever or you can't and if you you can can, continue to make them and if they can't they won't and Mm -hmm. you know there's a reason why there's a lot more 200 million dollar movies but a lot less $50 $50 million movies because nobody's going to the theater. So again, there's the person who wrote the perfect this generation's 48 hours is fucked because yeah. nobody is funding this generation's 48 hours. But the person, if you're really good at writing Avengers movies, well, there's never been more work. And that's great because if you actually look at the credits, there's usually about 35 credited writers and God knows how many uncredited writers. So there's plenty of people who are getting who are getting jobs there at my level. I think the the sea change is, it, it, I mean, I'll just use my own personal example. I don't know what calculus Sirius XM had for how many people need to listen to the Jason Ellis show for us to be able to justify paying the Jason Ellis show what the Jason Ellis show is accustomed mm-hmm. to making. But their number's higher than our number is because I have not yet made plans to launch a satellite into space. I don't have a lease in New York or Los Angeles. I don't have an HR department. I don't have a parking lot. I don't have business travel for people to go to the Super Bowl. Like, so it, 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 the getting in the black becomes a whole hell of a lot easier when you eliminate the middleman. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a massive, that's, that's why people are able to super serve crazy you know if you just want to talk about you know a podcast about the origin story of female jedis that's just not viable for disney to do Mm -hmm. it could very well be extremely lucrative for some guy to do that's the difference indeed i like that i do um since we're kind of you know i'm i'm an inter- entertainment site and I, I i would be remiss if i didn't ask man what what is it that you're watching or or into these these days um entertain entertainment old new what's got your mind old boy i should i wish i could go and see like my what my last few <laughs> are i'm really weird i watch very 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 little television uh honestly i just i'm I'm working so much these days and then the kids and then the kids finally go to bed the kids control the television and then i I mean i like basketball and i've seen about three quarters of basketball this year i watch any bad 80s movie that i haven't seen before uh any good 80s movie that i somehow missed i just watched a movie that is it, I mean, we just, it was a tale of two cities in my own bed because I watched this movie called Starman, which is uh, mm. Jeff Bridges plays an alien and uh, Karen Allen, who I think might be the most delightful female movie actress of all time. Like I am fucking smitten with, wow. with Indiana Jones's girlfriend. Yes. She's incredible. She's so cool. And she was only in like five movies. She's in Groundhog's Day and, uh, but she's in this and, it's, I started off laughing at it. And by the end, I kind of sort of really loved it. And my wife started off laughing at it. And by the end, she was still laughing at it. Um, I guess the story goes, they were developing it at the exact same time that E.T. was getting developed and E.T. came out first. And so they had to radically change the plot because it's it's pretty much if E.T. was a romance instead of a kid's right. movie. 
Um, I mean, I'm telling you, I watched that. I recently watched Superfly. I recently watched Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, which is a movie from the 30s with Gary Cooper. Is that uh, a c- sequel to the original Mr. Deeds? No, see, no. I, don't, I don't get that either, right? Because okay. no, okay. they came first. Because the, the Mr. Deeds Goes to Washington is that's when well, they're both Capra movies. I should know the, I should know the answer yeah, to that. Yeah. that. One is he goes to the government and he's like, well, hold on a second. This whole place is corrupt. And at the end, they're like, oh, my God, you're right. We have forsaken the Republic. Thank you for <laughs> setting us straight. Um, <laughs> This is the exact same thing, only with rich people in New York and Gary Cooper instead of Jimmy Stewart. Um, uh, but it was very good. And but I, I mean, I'm telling you, I watched that over the course of like six nights because that's how much TV I watch. Uh, I just watched yeah, Superfly. I watched Public Enemy by James Cagney that it turned with James Cagney that it turned out I had watched six weeks earlier and don't even recall having seen. Uh, I don't know. Fleabag was very good. That's last year. Uh, I watched one other thing that's actually a kind of new. I rewatched the IT Crowd, which is a, a British series. Yes. I'm like, yeah, did you try turning it off and on yet? <laughs> I don't know why everybody that, that should be just as big as The Office. It's freaking, it's incredible. Richard Iowade, <laughs> like the, one of the most amazing TV characters of all time. I don't know why I, I and I tell people to watch it and they never get back to me on it, which tells me that they watch an episode and they're like, I don't care. It's incredible. Yeah, you get- very, it's so good. You got to give every, every, I do the th- three episode rule unless yeah. the first one's just a tr- tr- like has to be yeah. br- really atrocious. I, I yeah. do th- like the three episode rule. I also, like the second right? season was better than the first one. So yes. I think maybe some people, and, and it, the first season is very, very good. I enjoyed the first season, but I guess I can see where some people are like, eh, I got the idea. But the second season is, is, it's stupid good. D- did you, did you, you, you have a pre- previous appreciation for, for British humor? Yeah, that definitely helps. Because that does help. <laughs> I also, I, I, uh, I, I realized watching it that as much as I think the world thinks of Irish people as genial and delightful and fun to hang out with, there's really not any examples I can think of like of like <laughs> Irish humorists in the culture. I think it might be the tall poppy thing of where like, Ireland has one of those cultures where you're not supposed to try to stand out and draw attention to yourself. So maybe they don't really encourage people to Um, get up on stage and go, Hey, everybody, look at me. I'm the funny guy, but, but I'm watching Chris O'Dowd and as someone who was raised in a very Irish American community. And I was mm -hmm. around my sister did Irish dancing. Like we, I babysat for multiple legitimate Irish families. Like as someone who's pretty plugged into it, I think I, it appealed to me to have an Irish element to it as well. And then I, we were watched it for like the 10th time. And I was like, wait a second, who's like another funny Irish person Mm -hmm. in the culture is like Chris O'Dowd, like the first one, who am I not thinking of? It's I I hear you get into so many topics and that's kind of like, like I said, part of what in, in sp- inspired me to do this show. And I'm, I'm glad to get to uh, talk to you. I've t- talked to some uh, authors I'm looking at um, trying to get some, some uh, bands and, and musicians and of course, find, find ways to tie it in all into in- entertainment because almost every, everything is inter- entertainment today to today, sure. you know, yeah. I get that. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, I looked, looked around at what was going on with you guys. And of course, uh, there's the professional side of me that was immediately, Hmm, I wonder what this happened. I wonder about that person on that channel, what, what, what they're say. So, but then the, the fan in me immediately was like, Oh damn, man. You know, I, I listen to these guys all the time. I hope they're going to, going to be okay. And immediately I see you guys start getting help and and uh um uh set up and and you had already had a little bit of infrastructure for for yourself yeah 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 yeah. so the tully show is the podcast i've been doing for forever and people can get it wherever they pod i don't think i'm on um pandora which is odd i think i just well again i didn't really used to pay all that much attention right clicked all the boxes and forgot now i'm (laughs) Wait, am I there? I probably should be there, which is funny because Pandora is Sirius XM. Yeah, right, right. 
I don't think I've been there this whole entire time, uh, which just goes to show you the level of integration and 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 the level of of you know uh, communication really screwing the bolts that I've I've had on on my, my side as well. <laughs> um, on, the, on the Patreon, like it barely matters. I I do Tully time once or twice a week, which is like silly news headlines because I, I I've always considered that sort of the heart and soul of the the Ellis show, or at least what I bring to the table. Uh, right is, is and. Uh, so I like doing that. I started doing just like I said, a Q and A pod called Rambling Man that I, I didn't expect to ever do anything like that, but people seem to enjoy that. And then I talk about music a whole bunch. I do the new music releases of the month and I do bands you might like, which are just bands that I kind of like that I feel like people either haven't heard of or, or might be curious about, but haven't heard. And I'm also probably next week gonna start another new one, which is just called, I Heard These Guys Are Good, which is a combination of People send me all the time music suggestions mm-hmm. they think I would like. And then I personally have like a like a 14 page Google Doc of, you know, oh, I heard this is cool. I heard this is cool. So I just figured it might be fun to go through and either go, oh, this is actually good, or let's make fun of these guys. You know, um, I feel a little weird about doing it with music people have suggested to me because I think it's usually like they love it and they think I'm gonna love it. Mm-hmm. And I'll feel like a dick if I'm just like, let me tell you why this is the most pathetic thing ever. But I feel like if it's my own suggestion of I at one point saw something or read something or my friend texted me or something and yeah. I put it there, well, I can totally make fun of why did I think this was going to be good. Um, so yeah, there's just, I mean, basically, if you like what I do, there's many different faces of it on my Patreon and I'm trying as best I can with the kids home from school these days to, yeah. Yeah. to crank out as much stuff as I can. And then on the Jason Ellis Show, of course, there's the free Jason Ellis Show podcast and the Jason Ellis Show Patreon, which is a little bit more straightforward in the regard that we're kind of doing like three two-hour shows a week about. One of them's free, two more is is patreon.com slash ellismate. And I, I understand why it's confusing to people, but once you kind of take a deep breath and think about it for a second, it's not really all that crazy. No, no. And what what I actually like is I several of the shows that you're you're talking about doing uh uh our segments i've heard you at least try a c- couple times on the jason ellis show uh sure. where people uh would send in demos or s- something and right. you guys would judge them and th- things like that right I think, right, right i think that's all awesome man uh i really i enjoy that type of of variety uh so again that that's that's great and i can't uh, suggest enough to everyone to go and uh, uh, check it all out. Jason's story also is a very, very interesting one and worth yeah. worth well, hearing. Mine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and your guys' journey, I look forward to uh, continuing to see it. Um, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> thanks so much for being on the show, Mike. Uh, sure. um, best of luck. Um, and uh yeah thanks dude <laughs> yeah, absolutely thank you buddy bye have a good one Take care. all right pre- appreciate it mike tully uh everyone check out his his uh contact information the show shows information links all that in in the the description below i'm telling you man you sound a lot li- like him i mean i know you guys aren't, aren't related but it's <laughs> it's crazy how much you guys sound alike <laughs> what do you yeah. what do you you think think you know here there's my mike talking a little bit about his journey in 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 radio and you and i have discussed the the changes in in consumption i'm working on talking to somebody that did a documentary on youtube that didn't go, go very well like didn't you know uh do as well as other videos that that he does, and yeah, my jaw mm-hmm. went off. Yeah, I, I heard guess that. they found something. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, what do you? How do you think that this digital instant gratification stuff is is like at the end of the day? What what is the is the net? Is it a net positive or a net ne- negative? This way we're consuming things today, Jammer. I don't know if it's a net positive or negative. It's just different. Uh, it changes the way consumed. It changes the way we think about stories. Like I, the number of people who are like, I'm not going to start WandaVision until it's done. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, that kind of gets rid of like, 
I guess it's it it almost changes. It depends on how the show is released. Like it change. It's just another factor of how like a, a series is released. Like I mean, you said it's the gratification, but I'm just conflating that right mm -hmm. now with with sort of how we we all binge things on Netflix or binge things on whatever. And it it's just an extra factor. Um, so let's start with that. We have people who are saying, I'm not going to start it until it's done. That way I can binge through the whole thing, mm -hmm. which I understand because I kind of feel that way. I'm like, oh, I want to see more. But at the same time, that could eliminate any potential for discussion. That kind of eliminates the, you know, the the online lifespan of the series and ultimately the series impact if it's just boom, at least on one day. Like I think Stranger Things could have been much bigger, could still mm. be much bigger if they released it on a week to week basis um, personally. And so it's, it's along those lines that I think instant gratification can be a negative because when it comes to the lifespan of a show, but it's also a positive that we're able to get more stories out there and being able to, to consume a lot more and really experience things as a continuous thing. Now on to instant gratification again, Something is lost, something is gained. What is gained is, you know, we get more educated masses on storytelling. We get people who actually get to appreciate story unlike they've been able to appreciate before. And maybe they get to tell stories themselves as a result because they're able to take in all this stuff. Like all these things, if I had growing up, like how would I have been different? Would I have, you know, you know, had a better overall education of cinema as a result. Like, who knows? That could have been the case. However, the negative is you really, conversely, you appreciate it much less. You know, I know if I had a movie that I got growing up, I watched that movie again and again and again mm -hmm. and again and again and again and again. Not because it was amazing, which they generally were, but mostly because it's all I had. You know, it's like, that's the thing that I bought. That's the thing that will keep me entertained for the next three months. And I'm just going to watch it again and again. And it really, I got to appreciate every aspect of it. So you get to consume a lot of stories currently. However, the negative is that you're reading less into it. It becomes more uh, disposable. And you almost value things less. And you just, you learn to treat things like, you know, as, as dispensable or disposable. It's just not quite the same so like it's not i don't know if there's a net positive or a negative it's just different yeah so that's my long rant of course for what, <laughs> what the difference is between those two i i get the idea that it's not necessarily positive or or negative although i do do think that uh the potential for for the negative side of changes to to take hold is stronger than the potential like we got to work hard harder to make sure that we don't lose uh lose lose content and lose content quality because we're so, so obsessed with getting it on you know either binge or online or or whatever that that um people aren't willing to uh pay enough money for creatives to make the things they want to see and then people complain like that's that's my biggest fear right um i've been talking uh the difference between hbo max and disney about their approach to movies and and theater releases and all that and i've been the ones saying you know while you might not like disney charging f for disney premiere if you want to see Young Young Avengers, New Avengers, or, or Avengers Five, whatever they call it, you you, you got to pay for movies, and you guys got to buy some merchandise and buy some comics and and all that. But um, that's my only big big fear with the ch changes in in consumption is seeing quality and and potentially, like I said, you you're, you're right that qu quantity and ac access is great. Like. Tully and and Jason and and uh, later on, uh, I'm gonna be speaking to Kevin Kraft, also podcaster. Her uh, it offers them a lot of opportunities, but uh, it takes a lot lot more more work, you know. Yeah. So, uh, um, anyways, I appreciate you being on today, Jam Jammer. Anything yeah, else no to say about uh, uh, the trailer or or uh, uh, changes in entertainment or anything? Hmm? 
I mean, we could talk all day about the yeah, no, we could. <laughs> we and you could uh, talk for forever. It's just you know, yeah, the, <laughs> like I said, it's a double edged sword. It comes with its positives and negatives, but um, and uh, yeah, it's one of the things that I'm sort of dealing with in my writing is figuring out what sort of landscape do I want to be in. Do I want to be that guy who puts out like four or five novels a year, or do I want to be that and like basically treat my have my readers sort of expect that, or is it better ultimately to have maybe fewer fans? or readers, but have each release mean something more. And I think it's, it's sort of that difference, like what is the ultimate best decision? Um, and obviously that's one, that's one person versus, you know, an entire yeah. company or an entire industry. So it's, it's yep. different, but I mean, there, there's something to think about. And there's always the, the, the three, the three groups in, in entertainment, whether it's a printed page or a, a big, big image on a big, big screen, you have uh, the consumers that want to be entertained. They have their own expectations. You have the creators, you know, writers, directors, uh, actors, actresses that are, are there to, to create. Yeah. Sometimes it's just to collect a check, but you know, they're, they're the art artists, the creators, they're, they're in it for the the creative process, and then you have the the studios who are in it for the money. And sometimes those things line up, and we get something ama amazing. Sometimes those interests don't line up, and the three fight with each other, and we end up with messes. But uh, either way, we've got Justice League coming out from Zack Snyder in a, about a month. March, what, what is it, 18th, I think? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and and you guys can catch that on HBO Max. May, make sure you check out all the great stuff uh, from Mike Tully and uh, the Jason Ellis Show. Look out for my interview with Kevin Kraft uh, coming up soon. Uh, maybe fr Friday, if not next Monday. And uh, uh, Jammer, where can people find you at online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, kind of, on Jam the Writer. You can find my names under the name AJ Serna on Amazon and Audible. And you can hear me most weeks on Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, which airs tends to air on Fridays. Yes, indeed. You guys can uh, uh, find find me at that column alone on Twitter. Be sure to check out the website uh, lrmonline.com every day for all your entertainment news, needs, and opinions. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All of our podcasts are going up there, as well as the wonderful uh, celebrity uh, interviews and uh, the podcast channel. Yeah, uh, Sound SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple, Google, all that good stuff. Like, follow, subscribe, help us out, help you out with more more uh, quality enter entertainment. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for, for listening, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.